Secrets of Temporalis Muscle, or my friend Leslie Kamenoff suggested I title it Jaws 1. He's holding the camera, so I like that. Let's talk about Temporalis. Years ago, when I was doing dissection, I was just, uh, you know, I'd look at the book, I'd learn the relationships of the tissues as best as I could, and then I'd try and find that in, in, the, in, the, in the form. And in the case of Temporalis, I screwed it up for several years because the books tell us that Temporalis is going basically from the temporal bone here to the, to the coronoid process of the mandible. So the mandible has two, two processes. I can't make my fingers go this way. Two processes. One is called the, it's, it's the, the condyle and one is the coronoid process. I'll show it to you on Mr. Bones. Come here. Come on down and have a look. I'll show you these processes. So here we have the mandible of uh, Mr. Bones, and there's the coronoid process, and there's the condyle of the mandible. So it forms this sort of two, two peaks with a little curve in between. And the temporalis muscle, where I understood it to start up here, pass behind the zygomatic arch and land here on the coronoid process, end of story. So I would cut here, thinking I was dissecting, the temporalis muscle away, and when I'd try and pull it up, I'd get all sorts of shredded tissue, which I would clean up, and then I would find the pterygoids underneath it and think, oh, I didn't destroy the pterygoids. Anyway, here, I've modeled it here to show you that there's actually a lot much more to the temporalis muscle than people tend to know. So here's our temporalis model, modeled in two colors, orange and yellow. And the temporalis muscle actually does wrap around the uh, coronoid process, but it also continues all the way down to the inner aspect of the angle of the mandible here in yellow. So that's actually a silvery tendon in our bodies, followed by muscle tissue that gets quite thick, literally as thick as my pinky finger, behind the orbit of the eye. So what I'm going to do is kind of dissect this for you so that you can understand this tissue a little better, this yellow part of the temporalis, which actually never goes to the temporal bone. It goes from the mandible to the sphenoid bone and the zygoma, or the zygomatic bone. So here we go. Here's the zygomatic bone. This is temporal bone over here. And then the sphenoid is projecting out at the surface of the skull right in here. So I'm going to pull this apart. Come on down to my dissection table here, and I'll take this apart for you. So I'm going to lift up temporalis here. Believe me, it's actually a lot harder to do this on a body. But, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up here and remove the, the temporal section of the temporalis muscle. I'm going to take off the mandible here and show you this area here. So it's actually quite thick, and you can see that the temporalis does go to the coronoid process here, right, like that, but then it trails on down and fills in behind the orbit of the eye in muscle tissue that is, this is modeled accurately, it's, mus it's as thick as my pinky finger here. And so we actually have uh, some joke names for this muscle tissue. So years ago in a dental magazine, uh, in the dental journals, rather, uh, some authors described this portion of the temporalis muscle. And because it went from the mandible, down here, from the mandible up to the sphenoid bone, here, they called it sphenomandibularis. And another set of authors noted that it went to the zygomatic bone and to the mandible, this portion of the tissue, and so they called it zygo mandibularis. Well, not to outdo them, but I found that it generally went to both, and so it was well described as sphenozygo mandibularis, or the SZM. So we've got our sternocleidomastoid, the SCM, and I decided we should call this the SZM, sphenozygo mandibularis, but really I can't differentiate it at this point. I've done it in different colors to identify this undescribed part of the tissue, but in fact, there's no perifascial seam in between this yellow portion and this orange portion. I could have done it all in orange and told the story too. Basically, it's temporalis muscle 
underdescribed is how I would call this muscle better than sphenol zygo mandibularis because we don't really need more Greek and Latin words tangling our tongues when we're speaking English here. So there you go, sphenol zygo mandibularis. Now, why is it maybe clinically relevant? I'd say is because people do mouth work, right? I did as a as a body worker. I would sit my finger here and work inside to help people have better jaw movement, have troubles with their uh, with their uh, uh, temp, uh, temporal mandibular joints here, and we do what's called mouth work. But if you notice, if you bring your finger into the mouth, right, and you, uh, the first thing you're going to contact when you're addressing the mandible from the inside is going to be, look, it's going to be the mandibular portion of sphenozygomandibularis, right? You're going to run into it here, you're going to feel muscle tissue, and many people will think, ah, I'm on the medial pterygoid. Well, the medial pterygoid is actually running further in here. So the first thing you contact is the temporalis muscle, but in a section you didn't know existed. So now you do, and feel free, it's not a bad thing to stick your own finger in your mouth, and feel this muscle tissue right in here as temporalis muscle. And if you write down, be careful, because you shouldn't chew on your fingers. So there you go, uh, secrets of the temporalis muscle. I hope that helps you understand your, your uh, your jaws a little better in this first installation of uh, treatments of the, of the uh, muscles of mastication. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.